Firebirds! Dip Plaintiff is on fire, but the rest of the team is pretty uh, lackluster. Kodiak's looking for game number three here to go up 2-1, having taken game uh, two. In fairly convincing fashion. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <clears throat> Some water went down the wrong way. <clears throat> Give me a sec. <laughs> Better. <clears throat> All right. Sonia Liberto on base to open her up. Might be um, might be some openings for some possible stolen bases today. Deaconess does not have great mojo, but they still have a great arm <clears throat> in dip plaintiff behind the plate. Well, a very promising start comes to an end and it's a three up three down inning <clears throat> Arsenio Oldman Wally success Larry premier this is the part of the lineup that the okay uh, lead off but I mean it's an option I guess <laughs> This is the part of the lineup they really need success from because they're they're just has not been nothing after dip plaintiff in this lineup who hits fourth. So these guys need to get on so that dip plaintiff can do her thing. And if we can limit it, assuming we get to Bob Deacon this. Should be able to profit. Byron Dirks and Dougie Braggs, Mike Magus. I mean, granted, shutting out the first third of a lineup in general is a good thing. Like, that's not that's not revolutionary strategy. But I think, particularly in this series, that's going to be even, even more key. Just because their offense is so centralized. Byron Dirksen fouls it off. I'm admittedly unsure if I really want to eat Deaconess's pitches just because their bullpen is so good that do I really want to find out what's what awaits me there? I kind of want to like, it's kind of wants like a slow burn here against Deaconess almost. I mean, a second double play ball. Ow. All right, well, here is Dip Plaintiff on fire. Not going to go with the intentional walk, but if we can give her very little to work with, that would be ideal. Philippe Hewitt. I mean, Hewitt did have a big um, RBI double, multi-RBI double. Uh, in game two, but aside from that, her bat has been... Quite quiet. And they keep pulling Greco Biggs from the game, who actually has not been bad. <laughs> so, I don't know what to make of it. They've got some good pinch hitters. JR Thunderer. Uh, Bullseye Daydream's been dangerous. And Stud Birch has got on paper the stats. Even if he is not um, particularly produced. Ball one. Ball two. And step Magus gets robbed by the shortstop. Whose name eludes me right now. He's the guy who hits eighth in the in the order, so he'll be due up next inning. Strike one to RC Garen. Ball one from Deaconess. Rushes her way off the plate. And giving him that inside corner again. And Garen grounds out to the second baseman. 
Brings up Rob Troon. I don't know why, but the shortstop of the second baseman's names are not sticking with me. I don't know what to say about that. I know where the hit. Oh, it's uh, it's Hewitt who hit. Who's, who's at second base? And then it's Eddie Strong who's at shortstop. I don't know why those two names aren't really sticking. Rob Troon says thank you very much. Eddie Strong. I want to say Eddie Strong is the only uh, like eight starting guy who has no hits in the series. And that does continue. Now batting, number three, four, the pitcher. Bob Deaconess is locked in. Still not much of a hitter, though. Let's give him the heat. Pop out to the left fielder. Well, I guess fly out would be more appropriate. But it is that popping motion. We go to the top of the fourth inning. This game going very rapidly. And um, we haven't uh, seen a run. Sonia Alberto just fair. That'll be a double. She's got two hits. Now batting, number Let's see if we can score first runner to reach second base today. Ball one. Strike two. Damn. That was a nasty that was a nasty break. Number 19, the short Thump through the middle. And that's an RBI single for Kevin Greer, who continues to be uh, really a bit much bigger part of the offense uh, here in the playoffs than he was in the regular season, which is good to see. His regular season was... Uh, Bizarrely disappointing. I've, I think I've said that a number of times. Now back, number five, the right fielder. Where you know the numbers looked really good until you realize that this guy is kind of supposed to be our Ken Griffey Jr. As they turned their third, third double play in four innings. Wow. All right. Now back. Arsenio Oldman leads it off against Rob Troon here in the fourth inning. Troon's only at 20 pitches, having one of easily his most efficient days uh, out there right now. Which is weird because normally he's a he's historically been our least efficient um, starting pitcher. And Doug Braggs with the snag in right field. Thank you very much. Haven't thrown the fork ball all day. Bit of an odd place to throw it, but it is good for a ground ball. And we go to the bot. Uh, we go to the top of the fifth inning. Five hits combined. Wow. Now batting number ten. Doesn't really feel like a pitching duel because all the hits are ours, but and it doesn't really feel like a pitching duel because Rob Trent's not putting up like massive strikeouts or anything. But we are getting to Deacon this now. Number one, the catcher. Fouled off by Steph Magus. And then a single up the middle. Magus's go back to back singles. And we'll bring up R.C. Guerin. Now batting, number nine, Runner in scoring position. Pitcher on deck. And it gets through. The runners hesitated. And I don't blame them. That looked like it was going to be caught. Number 34, the pitcher. I just want to fly ball into the outfield here, Rob. Can you give that to me? That'll do. 
Admittedly, Mike Magus running the bases, so not the fastest guy, but we'll take the second run. <laughs> now back, number 15, the second base. Brings up Sonia Liberto with a chance to cash in some runs. Uh, or she can hit into a double play. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. The double plays are eating us alive here. It really honestly feels like this game should be way more in hand than it is. And that's a little frustrating, to be honest. Now batting, number 10, the second base. Can't ask for more from Rob Troon right now. He's got a no-hitter going through four and two-thirds, which, I mean, you know, not a super long time. But still. And he's got one of the two RBIs. Slightly insane. Oh, I'm surprised he did not chase. He's also on fire right now. And things are coming along very nicely. Sean Candy, Kevin Greer, Byron Dirksen. This is the heart of the order, although a uh, two, only two for six tonight. Let's see what they can do here. Sean is back to being tense. Sean, you hit a home run like three at-bats ago. How about you chill? <laughs> Might need to start using Jeff Crozier in center field a little bit. Deacon is eh, still a low pitch count. And he's only given up two runs, so I mean... It's kind of a weird place because the, uh, the 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 double plays have really repetitively bailed him out. So it's a, it's a bit weird what I think about his pitching effort right now. Should not have swung at that. Should not. I apologize to you, Mr. Byron. That was a bad swing. Long fly ball. And Doug Braggs screwed that up <laughs> with the jump. And we have our first base runner uh, in the uh, the perfect game broken up here in the sixth inning. Drink the rest of the kitchen cleaner. <laughs> you don't have to. Oh, Deaconess is done. We got Daydream Bullseye, who has been... Pretty good so far. Not really. I'm actually, kind of tempted to walk her just because of the fact that um, we got a runner on third base, and it would it would set up the uh, would set up the. Um, As I say, would set up the double play, but we'll give up the run. And bring up Arsenio Oldman, who is easily dealt with. Antonio Wasman into the game. I don't know about that move. We shellacked him in game two. Maybe trying to play the lefty lefty matchup with Dougie Braggs coming up, but. Um, I have questions. Now batting, number five, the right fielder. Well, it does work for Dougie. So if that was the goal, now victory batting, achieved. 10, the He's only tense, surprisingly enough. I honestly thought he'd be worse Bojo than that. Ball one. And a base hit for Mike Magus. Step Magus stepping in. One for two today. It's just got a little itch there. And a base hit. So for the second time in a row, the Maguses go back-to-back -back singles. And set up R.C. Guerin nicely. And that is a pop-up. 
Infield fly. It feels like I have to go to the bench here and bring in Rob uh, Roberto Pietti. This is too good of a chance to score. I'd like to uh, keep Rob in the game. Rob Troon, that is. But, yeah, it felt like that had to be a pinch hit moment. Now batting, number 15. Sonia Alberto, second time up with bases juiced. And unless that gets out of the park, it did! Oh my god! Sonia Alberto, the least powerful player in the game, pretty much, with the grand slam. Wow! Suddenly, we got ourselves a bit of a ball game. Was been completely rattled. I still I, I I still don't agree with this decision to go to Wasman out of the bullpen. He's uh he's not been reliable. The guys get, get a strike out of Sean Kenny, who is absolutely terrible to play right now. Um not sure where we are in the order, because I wasn't thinking about a pinch hitter, but uh bring in Javier to work the seventh, anyways. And they get revenge. Larry's success goes deep. Or Wally's success. I should heal his second RBI. Interesting. All right. Javier takes it in stride. He's fine. We know on paper we have a much worse bullpen, as Doug Braggs cannot come up with it. And that's a Larry Premier double. And all of a sudden, this game, I mean, it's 6-2, but all of a sudden, the Firebirds offense is flying. And Javier has to be on a pretty short list, or a short leash. At least we are part uh, part away from the dangerous part of the lineup. That will probably advance the runner to third, though. Unless Kevin Greer can work miracles, and he cannot. Now really need a strikeout here. It's about the only thing that would keep that run from scoring, I think. Or a ground ball for a double play would be, I guess, the other option. We get the strikeout. So when he's needed to deliver, Javier does do it. But this is the second straight appearance for Javier where he's really struggled upon coming into the game. He recovered in game one. We'll see if he can do it again in game two. Kevin Greer, Byron Dirks, and Doug Braggs do up combined three for nine today. So they've been a little bit quiet. Now Although, Rear does have an RBI. Wasman is still in the game. I question this in a big, big way. I really question this. This is really questionable right now that Wasman came into the game to begin with and that he is still in the game here in the eighth inning of a pivotal game now three batting, number five the right fielder five hole <laughs> oh that's a double play ball no Braggs beats it out okay all right and that is the end for Antonio Wesman. Andrew Hall, who is the only bullpenner who has not pitched for the Firebirds uh, in this series, is into the game. It is a double swap. He's pretty good. Again, really good bullpen. And Stud uh, Stub Birch will replace uh, Greco Briggs in, uh, in left field. So once again, uh, Greco out of the game. Anyone think that Greco's going to play a full nine innings at any point in this series at this rate? I don't know. 
Drop. Thank you. I kind of screwed up the base running there. Apologies. Now batting, number one, Meant to send Doug to third and hold Magus at, at first, but I hit the hold all button. I mean, there will be no next season, so uh, you can't be right there, boxing, but it would not be a bad theory uh, if this were real life, that's for sure. <clears throat> they get Steph Magus. R.C. Garen versus Andrew Hall. Well, we get another run and go up 7-2. to two. Heading into the bottom of the eighth inning, Eddie Strong, Stubb, Birch, Arsenio, Oldman do up. I kind of get this Greco um, replacement because it was a double swap to get a pitcher in the game. And we know that Stud... Uh, Stub Birch is one of their better. That was some aggressive base running. And a very awkward cutoff. Alright, Stub Birch. This is a must out here, Javi. Don't mind if the run scores, but we need that out. And Javier Perez's uh, Torres' season. Continues to, or playoffs anyways, continues to be a bit weird. After a great regular season where he led the bullpen. Alright, Wally's success took me out of the park last time up. So, needless to say, we're a little cautious here. And I'll take a pop-up to the catcher any day of the week, thank you very much. Javier, no, you will not be batting, sir. You are coming out of the game. We'll go Pat Keen into the game. Uh, way into foul territory. Good, good. Uh, man, Sonia Liberto is like had a really good game. She's a triple short of the cycle here in the playoffs. And she is one of the few players I think I could go for a triple on a decent hit with. Two-two count. Keeps it alive. That will not be a triple. Might beat it out for a single, though. There we go. And you know what? We're going to do the... Oh, shit. I went with the wrong person. Okay, whatever. We'll we'll let Rick and Benny have it at bat. But I meant to bring in Jeff Crozier. <laughs> Just the way Sean is playing right now. I don't know. It, there's, a, there's a bad vibe to it. There's a very bad vibe to it. check good check good eye Kevin we'll take the walk Byron Dirksen comes up with two on now batting, just a pair of singles on the day which by his standards is a bit of a weak day but he could suddenly make that look like a very good day here should not have swung at that Senny Oldman makes the play. We go to the ninth. Rooster Sunquist on the hill. Now back, number seven, the right field. Um, additionally, we need to make that swap in left field to bring or in center field to bring in Jeff Crozier. So it is a dangerous part of the lineup with uh, Larry Premier. And the ever scary dip plaintiff along with Philippa Hewitt here. And Premier is on. With a double. Gives me a free base, though. Plaintiff has actually not had a great day. No hits. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I still don't want to deal with that on fireness right now.
we're kind of waiting it out to see if her uh, mojo will drop, honestly. Alright. This is quite possibly the at-bat of the game right here. Philippa Hewitt. Manages to beat out the double play, at least. And it will be J.R. Thunderer, Junior Thunderer, in for Andrew Hall. Sucker, eh? Uh, let's go. Just uh, there you go. Sunquist freezes him. And it comes down to this last out of the game for the Phoenix, uh, for the Firebirds. And the home teams are going to drop to one and two in this series because game three go into the Kodiaks. Go up two games to one over the Firebirds with a 7-3 victory here today. Just five hits, but they uh, rallied hard there from the sixth to eighth inning. Sonia Liberto gets to be the hero with a grand slam four-hit day. Sean Kenny is struggling still, but Kevin Greer, Byron Dirks in multi-hit games, Mike Magus a multi-hit game, Steph Magus, multi-hit game. RBIs for Greer. Mike Magus and Rob Troon gets an RBI in the win. He went six innings, gave up just one hit, one run. Javi got beat up a little bit, and Rooster Sunquist cleans out the ball game. So game four will go to Shannon Drake on the hill. We're gonna try and squeeze that in as the finale here. Scampers go up 3-0 on the Hatchets. They are dominating that series, really, outside of Game 2. Advocates go up 3-0 as well. And the Venom bring it to 3-2-1 against the Clankers. 